Uh, we start in the Gambia where President Adama Barrow has won a second term in the presidential elections with thousands of his supporters celebrating in the streets of Banjul. His opponents disrupted and disputed the results announced late Sunday. President Barrow won with 53 percent of the votes, defeating his rival Osanoa Darboa, who garnered 28 percent of the votes. In his speech, he urged Gambians to respect the supporters of his opponents in the free, fair and transparent elections. The international observers from ECOWAS had earlier called on all Gambians to accept the election results in good faith. The polls are the first to be held since the former president, Yahya Jeme, fled to exile in 2016. Hello, Gambians, residents and friends of the Gambia. I address you today with a great sense of joy and humility. Now that the Independent Electoral Commission, IEC, has declared me Adam Obama candidate, candidate for the National People's Party, NPP, the winner of the 4th December 2021 presidential election. I urge all my supporters to celebrate the victory in a civil manner. We are reminded those who wanted to support other candidates are equally Gambians, and their right to do so must always be respected. Well, we have with us Essay Njie, a political science lecturer at the University of Gambia. He joins us live via Zoom from the Gambian capital, Banjul. Essay, welcome to Africa Life. Thank you for taking time to speak to us. Let me begin by asking you, uh, talk to us about the comfortable win for a second term. What does this say about what President Adama Barrow has achieved for the country for his first term in office? Well, um, thank you for having me. First and foremost, um, the current president, Adama Barrow, um, shouldn't have any business to do in this election. Remember, in 2016, he was elected um, to lead a transitional government for three years, um, which he remained on. And then he decided to go for five years and also um, that you know he is supposed to embark on reforms, including legal and institutional reforms, you know, including to have a, a new constitution, a new electoral law, legal frameworks that you know everybody complained that under the Jammer regime they were bad, you know, and then under him we were exposed, expected to have these reforms in place. We were also expected to have security sector reform. We we're also expected to have civil service reforms and a lot of other institutional reforms that we are not done. So the government, instead of being a transitional government, um, decided to entrench itself in power, led by Barrow himself. So, um, you know, coming to this election, um, you know, going by the promise he made in 2016, one wouldn't say, um, no one can say that he has achieved any of those promises, except that, you know, um, a, a, a financial commission was established, which, you know, revealed its reports, but then, you know, injustice or selective treatment was done. Also, the truth commission is completed, it has submitted its reports, and we don't know how that is going to be implemented yet. But then, you know, so in terms of the promises that he made to Gambians in 2016, nothing of that has been achieved well gambians voted for various reasons one include um you know because of infrastructural development that barrow focused on mo you know including few roads and few bridges that he you know constructed in the country since he came in 2016. so these are things that some voters will appeal to that that, that okay he has done this and that infrastructure is this you know even though these infrastructural developments are not many they're not everywhere but then in certain parts of the country they are there for the first time those people are receiving such infrastructural development so they use that as an, as an excuse to say, okay, Barrow deserve our vote. But then secondly, also has to do with the ethno-linguistic dimension of it. Um, Gambian politics has been reduced to ethnic um, 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 ethnic census, one can say, um, that a lot of people, if you talk to a lot of people, will say, well, Barrow is not the option. But then, you know, his opponent will say, no, Darbo is not also the option. You know, so it's a tribal card that has been used. 
um, by Baro and his party, and it has really worked for them because you know a, a lot of the other tribes, you know, have been used to say that look, the Mandinka ethnic group where Oseno Dabo is from, when they come to power, they will they will they will send you all out of the country, and then so people tend to believe that look, this is a fight against. You know, between the Mandinka ethnic group and other ethnic groups. In fact, his religious advisor was quoted as saying on Monday, last week Monday, um, shortly before the closure of campaign, that you know, vote for Adama Barrow so that you, the other ethnic groups, can survive in the country. So um, it was this election was not was not an election to vote for Barrow, but it was an election to reject Hussein Udabo and his United Democratic Party, who have been perceived by Barrow and his party members as, as or his party supporters as you know a tribal party uh, which is really dangerous for the country as we head towards consolidating our democracy. All right, compelling points that you've made there, SA. Uh, let me zero in on what you've just said and pick it apart a little bit. You said he's achieved nothing since uh, 2016. Uh, what would you say is his biggest challenge in this second term going forward. Can you briefly talk to us about that? See, I mean, I, I wouldn't say he has not achieved anything. Um, in t like I said earlier on, in terms of infrastructural development, few roads and few bridges that he's built um, is some, seen by some people as, as an achievement. And um, one wouldn't dispute that as well. But then, you know, people also see Baro as that harmless person compared to Yaya Jami, who was arresting and torturing people. You understand? So they see him as that harmless and peaceful guy. But then, Coming to this time, you know, but what I, what I was saying is that, you know, all the promises that he made, he was supposed to be a transitional president. He was supposed to embark on reforms, institutional and legal reforms, and he has failed in delivering these to Gambian people. But coming to the second term, you know, Gambians have been crying of corruption in the country since Barrow came to power. This is one of the most but, you know, fundamental challenges that Barrow has been facing, and he did little or nothing, absolutely nothing, to address corruption in the country. Coming to the second term, Gambians are now looking, not looking at him as a transitional president. They're looking at him as somebody, an executive president who is supposed to deliver the developments that he has promised. It's not only the infrastructure, but we have healthcare problems. You have crisis in the education sector, you know, food. The living cost of Gambians are getting, you know, is, is, is just getting high in this country. Unemployment rate, you know, um, a, a terrible economic situation. These are things that Gambians will expect the borough government to address in the second term. But more importantly, the draft constitution that was rejected in parliament, thanks to Barrow and his supporters in parliament, also the, the security sector reform that is not moving anywhere, also the civil service reform that has not even been started yet, one can say. I mean, these are things that Gambians will expect Barrow to come and, 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 and change. I mean, the reforms will have to come to alive again, including institutional and constitutional or legal reforms that will guarantee the fundamental rights and liberties of the government people. We're not saying that under Barrow these, you know, freedoms of movement, association and all that, civil and political rights have not, of course they have been respected compared to the Jami era. There's a right. degree of, uh, there have been improvement in terms of media freedom here. All there. right. So we expect these things to continue. SNG, we're we going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for keeping us up to date with the very latest over there. Well, there you have it. President Barrow wins second term in office.